The day of commissioning any major project is always a day of excitement, a day of thanksgiving. All of the hard work and the hassles of getting the project done are behind you and you look forward to using it. And this is the excitement of Second Chronicles chapter 5. It took seven and a half years for Solomon to have the temple completed. But at last it was completed. So all the work that Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold and all the furnishings, and put them in the treasuries of the house of God. And Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel, in Jerusalem, that they might bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord up from the city of David, which is Zion. Therefore all the men of Israel assembled with the king at the feast, which was in the seventh month. So all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. Then they brought up the ark, the tabernacle of meeting, and all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. The priests and the Levites brought them up. Also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled with him before the ark were sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted or numbered for a multitude. Then the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place into the inner sanctuary of the temple to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark and the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. The poles extended so that the ends of the poles of the ark could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from outside, and they are there to this day. Nothing was in the ark except the two tablets which Moses put there at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they had come out of Egypt. And it came to pass, when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions, and the Levites who were the singers, all those of Asaph and Heman and Juduthan, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments and harps, and with them one hundred and twenty priests, standing with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass, when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, that they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good for his mercy endures for ever. That the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud, so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together this exciting day when the temple is commissioned. From Second Chronicles chapter 5. All the work had been done. With final cleaning, everything was in order. The building had been built with storerooms around the outside in three storeys, as three kind of terraces attached to the side of the building, not disrupting the structure of the house itself, but built around the outside. This is where the treasures that David had accumulated, silver and gold and furnishings, were brought in and stored, the treasuries of the house of God. Solomon ascended the elders of Israel, the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. In other words, he brought the whole nation together, that as a nation they might bring the Ark of the Covenant from the city of David, that is Mount Zion, to Jerusalem. It was a national affair, not just 
the activity of a religious subgroup. Now, the ancient city of Jerusalem was on a small uh, ridge which kind of ended, and so that made a fairly defensible position for a city. For the city of Jerusalem was not that large, but because of the steep sides of this ridge, they could put a wall around it, and even though it was lower than the Temple Mount, it was defensible. But the temple site was on a higher point. So they brought the Ark of the Covenant up from the tent that David had pitched for it in Mount Zion, in in his city, up to the Temple Mount and up to the temple. Now, there'd been a lot of build-up to this day. So there were many priests and Levites who were dedicated to the Lord who were operating in their various services, who were participating in the events of that day. And they bring up the Ark of the Covenant. They also bring up all the bits and pieces of the tabernacle itself, the tent that had been at Gibeon and would now also be stored in the new temple. And with this, they brought a huge amount of offerings of sacrifices, sacrificing sheep and oxen. Now we're not told whether these were peace offerings or burnt offerings. No doubt some of them were burnt offerings and many of them peace offerings, where portion is given to the priest and the fat is burned, but the people eat the meat because it is a day of great joy and feasting. And when the Ark of the Covenant is brought in, it was placed in the innermost sanctuary. And it's noted that the only things contained in the Ark of the Covenant at this time were the two tablets of stone that Moses had prepared there at Mount Horeb. This was the basis of the covenant that God had with the people, summarised on these two stones, but written out in the book that everyone had access to. Now, The singers gathered on the east end of the altar. The temple was oriented to be facing east. So coming from the east, you had the grand altar, the laver, then the temple front doors. And they were standing such as to face the temple with the altar and then the laver in front of them. They had their backs to the rising sun, although it was probably not early morning, but later in the morning, Nevertheless, as they gathered, clothed in white, with their cymbals, their stringed instruments, their harps, and 120 priests sounding, trumpets, a grand fanfare, and the voices of the people singing, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. They were praising God with music and song. This is always the point of victory, to give praises to God. While they were praising God, the Lord filled the temple with a cloud, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. So this was the bright shining cloud that had been with the children of Israel in the wilderness. They had not seen this glory for hundreds of years, but now the priests could not continue in the holy place because of the brightness of the cloud. And as they came out, the cloud could be seen in the temple. And of course, this signifies that God is moving in. He has accepted this place that has been prepared and he is dwelling among his people. This temple would stand for over 300 years before being destroyed by the Babylonians. And later in the Persian period, a new temple would be built but it would not be as magnificent as this one. The Ark of the Covenant would not be there, and the glory of the Lord did not come into that temple until it came in as the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And so when we come to the New Testament, John says of the Lord Jesus, We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of God. And it is the presence of the glory of the Lord that shows the presence of God himself.